What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode here at the office. Um, <laughs> the weather today, it's interesting to say the least out here. This rain is wild. Um, so anyway, it, uh, it looks like the flooding's gonna get worse. Fingers crossed it doesn't get worse, but whew, it's wild out here. So with that being said, we're obviously not gonna play today. Today's another day of training and crushed a big leg workout today. So my body's like good, but today's not a day I wanna go like full, full tilt, right? On days like today, um, one of the things I love to do, and this was like a foundational thing in helping me accelerate my swing change was doing a ton of half swings. So I'm gonna show you today my half swing setup. We got about 100, just over 100 balls today. I did anywhere from like two to 400 a day when I was really, really going for it to like cement the change. This is probably one of the most foundational drills I've ever come up with and is I think vital for really getting your game together. So anyways, let's dive into it. I'm gonna show you what's up. Now to get started, I start with a 60 degree wedge. For the first couple days, I would basically not go beyond a, my 50 degree wedge. Now, why half swings? Why start with wedges? From my observations of better players, and if you saw my video yesterday talking about the role my coach Max is playing in my development, through observing better players and also guys, remember, right? Like when I was doing my under par journey, I think I played like over 300 rounds of golf throughout the entirety of, the, of, of 2020, okay? So I also played with a ton of amateurs and every good golfer I know can absolutely rip it with their wedges. Amateurs, like most guys can like sort of hit an iron. They're not ripping it with their wedges at all. So my theory is if you can't half swing a wedge with a ton of skill, well then what's the point of even going to any other club in your bag yet? What does your driver matter if you can't half swing a wedge with control, right? My thinking is if you build, a, build up a foundation from here throughout to the top end of your bag, how are you gonna fail? Right? Like that's the thinking, okay? So you start with a 60 degree wedge. Now, we're trying to master just this little like 30 yard shot. Maybe even less to start. Like nothing crazy. We're not talking, trying to do anything wild, okay? And what you want to get is to learn how to use your feet, use your core, and get the right mechanics from here to here, right? On a full swing, there's so much, once you get past this position, players have so many different ways to get back to this, to this moment right here before we get to impact, right? So with the half swings, you're training your brain, training your body to get from this position through to this position without sliding, without moving forward, you know? And that was my big issue, right? So you're just teaching yourself to set up nice and easy, and just have a nice smooth because the, the sliding and the moving forward is what's creating improper impact conditions, right? Your low point gets all messed up. You're not exerting your ground forces correctly. So by get learning, teaching your body how to just get from here to here, right? And then another thing with the Genghis program, right? One of the ways to like shallow the shaft is obviously to get the face, right? You want the club face square, so you just rotate through with a square club face. Another issue I was having on top of the sliding and the bad footwork, right, was I was also flipping, or flipping. So the key to this is to have your stable footwork, okay? Learn how to get to here, even to here, and then learn how to turn with the right footwork, square the face, and turn through the shot. And I would just repeat this over and over, just trying to get a sense of my footwork, everything, shut the face. I practice this takeaway motion because this is my takeaway motion, how I do it. And I would hit that shot over and over and over. Now, as you see, something like that's so basic, but you'd be surprised at how difficult it is to hit like five of those in a row that go at your intended target, keeping the right impact conditions, right? If you're not able to do that with a wedge, how do you expect to do that with a nine iron? How do you expect to do that with a seven iron? How do you expect that to do that with a driver, right? So this is that thinking of like, if you can 
count on the fact that with a 60 degree wedge, nice and smooth, keeping your tempo good, keeping your right mechanics, if you can clip that 60 degree wedge, like money, move it up to the, now your next wedge, now your next wedge, now you're in your pitching wedge. All of a sudden, you can move that up throughout the bag. You know, every day as I started to get more consistent, I would graduate up to more clubs. Now, I never really went past a seven iron only because as you guys, as I've told you guys in other vlogs, my focus really is to nail my mechanic completely with an eight iron right now on a full swing and then graduate it up to the, up each club, right? Yes, I can still hit full shots right now with all my other clubs, that's fine. But I'm saying from like a consistency standpoint, wedge through to eight iron is like really, really good right now. And then the other ones I'm just continuing to work on to refine. Some different training aids I would use to help get me to that impact position was uh, this one right here. So one of the things for me, right, was because I was moving forward towards the ball as opposed to turning, right? So what I would do is I would have this rod here, right? And the whole point was I would have to finish the half swing and stay low, right? This is what taught me how to get side bent. This is what taught me how to stay low through the shot and get to that impact position, right? Because that's what we're training. We're training our, our body to get to here and then get to here. Which is, now again, it's not gonna be exactly perfect for everybody. Everybody has a slightly different impact position. But what this helps do is it just teaches your body to go, okay, I know what this is supposed to feel like, and I know what this is supposed to feel like. So that you can just rehearse that over and over. And so I would put this here because it would force me to finish low, to finish through the shot. Now that I've progressed a little bit and I have my swing blueprint, right? What my swing blueprint has taught me is now how I'm going to properly apply force, right? So now I use my force pedal on top of this to keep me finishing low, keep me, keep me working towards that side bend, right? Because again, what we're trying to get to here, here, and through, right? And I'm trying to get this lead leg, like one thing I'm working on is I need this lead leg to extend, right? So we're gonna take a couple practice swings and we're just gonna get this motion where I know I gotta push here and then clear. Right? And I'm gonna rehearse that a bunch. Then what I'll do is I'll take a ball and I'll try and just hit a couple. Perfect, nice and straight. You should be able to hit your intended shot shape with just this half swing, right? So for me, I practice this little cut. It should go straight or cut just a little right at this little flag in front of me, okay? Now, if the ball doesn't do that or the ball moves, at the time, I didn't understand why. So I filmed every swing. So I would hit five and then review, right? Now I know why, because I've got a better understanding of my mechanics and what causes me to do that at the time as I was going through the discovery period, is I would go through this film, I'd send clips to Max, we'd go back and forth, and this is how we kind of pushed through a lot of a lot of my issues, was just understanding, okay, like, if I can't get a half swing to cut the way I want, why? That's gotta be a big problem, right? And I think having these training aids are good, keeping it nice and slow, again, 60 degree wedge, half swings, that's it, okay? and. Again, you should be able to hit your intended shot shape. Don't speed up and don't cheat yourself on this. The key is you gotta sit through and you gotta be patient and you gotta go slow and do a ton of rehearsals, practice the footwork, hit it. A rehearsal, practice the footwork, hit it. Take your time, take your time because you need to ingrain this new pattern into your body. And for me, I found this to be the most impactful way to integrate a new move. All right, so now we're gonna get some work in. I'm gonna let the camera roll a little bit. Let's uh Let's see what we can get up to.
Okay, that last one was a really good one. So I went and took a look back because I wanted to see exactly what my movement looked like so I can understand that feel that I just executed and how it translated. Again, I'm trying to get that left leg for me. I need that left leg to push and I need my back leg to push forward because I'm still leaning back a little too much. Even with all the speed and where everything's going with the swing, I'm still leaning back a little too much. So if I can push and teach my legs to left leg to pop up and right leg to push forward, we'll be on the right path. Uh, we're getting a pretty good wear mark on our 54 degree wedge. This has uh, been from the practice lately. I think we're hitting it out the middle, everybody. <laughs> um, okay, so see on that last one, I exaggerated a feel for a couple swings, okay? I changed the position of the force pedal to move my feel around because I'm, I need my front, I need the ball of my left foot to as soon as I transition, I needed to push. And that's what's, that's what's causing my problems. So I exaggerate that feel for a couple swings. And then on the last one, I get it to go. And that was a really, really good swing. So now I've got that on video. I categorize that. I'll clip all the good swings. And those are the ones I send to Max because I'll say, hey, is this correct? And also I would send him bad swings and be like, why is this happening? And he would identify, okay, this is where the issues are. So it was, it was great learning for me because I started to understand what a good swing actually looks like fundamentally. And that's helped a ton. But I will, this is a great area because again, half swing, super slow, super whatever. Exaggerate a feel, uh, really milk it to try and get your body to adjust to it so then you can execute it. Anyway, let's hit more. Now, another thing you'll see me rehearse every single time is my hand path, right? Because I'm trying to get that face shut on the way back so that it's shut on the way through, right? For my matchup, that's what I need to do. So that's what I'm constantly working on. This half swing drill is what allowed me to understand how to properly add flexion to my wrist in the swing. Up to that point, I would always turn the club open and I would have an open club face, which provided an outrageous amount of dynamic loft and spin, which is why when I went and got my irons redone back in June uh, and I was hitting it stupid high, I didn't need new irons. What I needed was to change my dynamic loft and change the way I delivered my hands. So this is what did it for me, this drill, because I understood how to add the right amount of flexion into my swing to keep that face shut so that I could, all I have to do is rotate through it, right? I know I've said this before, the difference between a pro swing and an amateur swing is using your body to rotate through the ball. What this half swing drill teaches you is how to get your legs and your hands in the right spot to just rotate through it without adding any flippy weirdness, right? Just a smooth controlled motion. That's it. That's what makes the difference. This, and this was like a big light bulb moment for me when I went through this process. Because once I got my hand path right, and once you start shifting your weight right, and you can do it with wedges, all of a sudden, you clean up your contact like crazy. Now, what do I aim at? So see that orange marker right there? And that thing coming out of the ground? This thing right here, okay? I try and aim for that space. Basically, like, the space between 
this green marker, that orange marker, and this little green stake, that little quadrant, that little triangle there is like home sweet home of where we want to land the ball. Now for the first week of doing this, okay, I wouldn't even go to a full swing until like the very end of the session and hit like a couple balls full swing at the end. The reason being is you don't want to cheat this process. This takes time. This is not quick. This is not quick. But the results you get from this are worth their weight in gold, okay? I should have been doing this last January. If I had just done this last January, my year would have turned out totally different. This is the work. This is the, this to me is the key to unlocking the next level of your golf game is can you hit controlled half shots with wedges to start and don't cheat the process. Go slow, go through your mechanics, make sure your hand path is right, make sure your footwork is right, make sure that you're hitting those optimal positions in a half shot that work for your matchup and rehearse those over and over and over. And when you can hit a bucket within this little target zone that I'm talking about and you're not getting, you're not thinning them, you're not blowing them way left or right, you can start clipping them, okay? Which again, took me time. Guys, I, I have shanked and thinned and you name it, okay? I've sprayed it everywhere on this range. But now I can go through and I can clip it at these targets all day. Just boom, boom, boom. Because of putting in the patience of just grinding through these small things. And this is that difference, again. This is that difference between guys who play good golf and guys who play great golf. The guys who play great golf can do this. But if you want to develop good habits, this is it right here. Here is the undercover super sneaky thing about this drill. By doing this, you have developed a get out of jail punch shot for on the days when you know you don't have it. You know, when your trunk's slamming and your body doesn't feel 100% right and, or you know, just those days when you know you don't have it. Now, from doing this drill, you've got a reliable punch shot. You can club up and basically just hit these like half to three quarter punch shots and you can slap your way around a course, no problem playing that kind of golf. I've had to play tournaments like this when I was going through the swing change. So it, it's a good little sneaky way of doing this drill. You, the byproduct is obviously it's gonna make your full swing better, but on the days when you might not have it and you need something that'll get you around, this is what'll do it. I haven't tried this yet, but I'm convinced you could probably do this drill at home into a net because you could tell pretty quickly if your contact is good or bad. Um, you can't obviously see the curve. So the only thing that would make me nervous would be, you know, you couldn't see if you're curving it left or right. Like for me, I want to see that it's dropping to the right every time. Cause if I'm not doing my leg work right and it starts creeping left, then I could build in some bad, ha bad habits. So that's the only thing that makes me nervous about doing it at home. But you can work on a lot of doing this half swing stuff into a net at home. I think if you were able to figure out a way to judge that feedback could be a good option. Could be another thing to work on through the winter if you don't have access to a range. That's really good progress because I've had an issue stalling out of my swing just after impact. I'm not fully committing to the rotation because I've just been so focused on getting to impact. So now working on this half swing, I'm finishing turn every time, making sure I'm finishing through the swing. Um, gonna hit a couple more and then we're gonna pepper in some full swings now to see how this is all matching up. That last one was nasty. Was it 75 swings in? And I've already made tangible change to my swing, right? This is that whole like 1% better, Michael Jordan mentality. The whole thing of this off season, 1% better every single day. We got 1% better already today just by working on this movement.
And there we have it. That is a phenomenal, phenomenal range session. I feel great. Is the, is the move perfect right now? No. But what I've learned is that I just need to get it to a certain point and then you pick it up from there the next day. And some days it'll take me 100 balls to get to that point. Some days it took me 300 balls to get to that point where it was enough to just ingrain the movement and then I could sleep on it and come back fresh and build on that, right? Again, it's 1% better. I, it's, it's monotonous, but it's the truth. It's like in golf, there's no such thing as exponential gains in a single day. It's just little bits every day. Little, you just gotta put a brick. You gotta put a brick to build the house every single day. That's it, you know? And in my opinion, this is one of the best ways to put a brick every day towards the foundation of your game when it comes to your full swing. My swing would not be where it is without doing this drill um, to the level of insanity that I did. And on days like today, when you're tired, you still wanna move the ball forward, but like my body's not 100% today. Can I swing full out if I want to? Yes. It was a heavy lift this morning. I was swinging really aggressive yesterday. My way of getting 1% better today is doing this. And simple, simple drill, but the dividends that this pays, everything. All right, guys, almost midnight here, getting the final protein shake of the day in. Guys, this half swing drill is the single most important drill I've ever done to get better at golf. So hopefully you guys found a ton of value in this. Thank you so much for watching. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll catch you on the next one.